You're tuned in to Just One Hot Mom with host Nanika Ansari. Get ready. She's about to bring you that fire, that flavor, that heat, all that passion, and more from around the world and in your neighborhood. Stay tuned. Hey, hot peeps, and welcome, welcome, welcome. Today is going to be a little bit different because I have a soulful sensation sitting next to me. And so we are going to jump right in because let me tell (laughs) y'all, I have been all over the arts lately, looking at paintings, listening to different music. You know, I joined the dance class, so I'm just all on top of it. And today in the studio, I'm lucky to have with me Donnie Lene. Hey. Hey, how are you? I'm excellent. How you doing? I am so excited to have you here. Let me tell you, first of all, somebody saw when I talked to her on the phone before I interview, I said, girl, that shaved head. I said, honey, it takes (laughs) It takes a bold, beautiful woman to pull it off. And you are really pulling it off. Thank you. It is gorgeous. It's easy. (laughs) (laughs) I know that's right. I'm like, I told her, I said, I wish my hair was the right size to be able to pull it off. I don't know if I could pull it off just yet. No, your head head is fine. Mm -hmm. Girl, don't say that because I'll be in here next week. Don't have no hair. Do it. Do it. (laughs) So uh, I'm excited to have you in the studio because we had a brief conversation earlier this week. And I was like, you know what? I'm not going to even send you any prep stuff because I want this to be the most organic conversation. So people get to know you as the artist. All right. And so I'm excited. So, but I did, you know, I tell people I stalk. So I did stalk your Instagram, <laughs> your bio, your FB. Stalking I was me. looking for you. Yeah. And so since you've been singing since you were four years old. Yes. I've been singing since I was four, but my grandmother uh, checked me and said I was singing since I was two. Since you were two. Yeah. So I think like <laughs> about a month ago, the last time I was at Elevations Radio, I think that was like the same day she told me I was like two years old. So. Oh, see, Grandma's following that career. Yeah, she Grandma. Said, Let me get like, it together. Don't get it twisted. No. <laughs> <laughs> so you've been singing this whole entire time. Was this always your life's passion or did you kind of veer off and do something else and came back to singing? Or did you know that you were meant to be a singer your entire life? I mean, I've known ever since I was little that singing is what I was supposed to do. Um, Of course, you know, life takes its turns and you have to kind of live um, and figure out how to, you know, be responsible adults. (laughs) (laughs) I got bills, y'all. So, I mean, I had to, you know, journey into a, a couple of different, you know, career fields to maintain. But yeah, but you always came back. Always. Me. So, because I was when we were talking, you like you went to the School of Arts for you guys that do not know or, or where Cleveland, Ohio is, but the School of Arts is like a very, I want to say, prestigious school here where artists just are allowed to flourish and be themselves. So you went to the School of Arts. You've been in plays, mm-hmm. and now two EPs in. Two EPs in. Yes. What does that feel like? How are you feeling right now? You know what? I'm thankful. A lot of people don't get a chance to share who they are you know they don't get a chance to you know have a gift some people have a gift and don't have the courage to use it or get out in front of people and share it so I'm just thankful do you ever though still get nervous yes every single time (laughs) Really? (laughs) I get terrified like it is a hot mess show day is is the day where like Either you need to be like all over me or like get away. Like, because either I'm going to need you, need you, need you to help me stay calm or I'm going to be spazzing like, oh, my God, you know, what am I going to do? So let's go back. Let's go back in time. And do you Mm -hmm. remember like your first performance, like your first big performance where it was going to be like an audience that wasn't your family? Mm. These were going to be people that you didn't know. Describe that moment. Because I think like there's somebody listening in that's like, I can't do it. But you did it. Yeah. How was that moment? My first big performance, I would have to say, oh, that's a good one. At Cleveland School of Arts, I mean, like every performance was big, Mm -hmm. but I I think it was, oh, yes, this is what it was. We were um, the choir director when I was in maybe the third grade, third or fourth grade. um, Her name. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God. I'm trying to remember her name. I'm not going to get it it wrong, Grandma. (laughs) Don't tell on me, y'all. Don't tell on me. Mrs. Moore. Um, And we were in the super choir. 
at Newton D. Baker, which was the the elementary school of arts. Okay, cool. And um, we had to sing for the mayor. And, oh, my God, I was so terrified. I was terrified. But we did so good. <laughs> he loved us. And see, I think it's the, it's the after part where you're like, whew, we did it. It's mm -hmm. over with. It's a wrap. I'm ready. I can take on the next thing. Yes. Hey, callers. If, uh, hey, listeners. If you want to call in and ask Donnie any questions, the number is 440-252-0518. 440-252-0518. So here it is. Third grade. Big performance. Mm -hmm. We get past it. And so we are moving forward in our lives. And so do you, are you, do you still reflect back on that moment when you're thinking about performances now? Because you've evolved as an artist. I have evolved. You know what performance sticks out to me the most? <sighs> I auditioned for um, American Idol. You did? Yes. Oh, I wish I would have had that clip. Oh, my God. I think <laughs> it's a news clip somewhere out there of me. I don't know if anybody's found it. I'm going <laughs> to find cool. it later. <laughs> right. And uh, we were down at the stadium, the Brown Stadium, um, and I sang Natural Woman um, by Aretha Franklin. Uh, and you could hear me sing at the, the field goal. Ooh. My mother, she had to, she had to go off, you know, outside mm -hmm. of the building and she was going to meet me afterwards because you walk up, it's like 13 tents and at the 13 tents, it's three people in each tent. You step up, you sing and you step back. So I was in the tent that had a mime and <laughs> well, that's got to be nerve wracking right there because you don't know what to expect. Mm -mm. Yes, it was a mime and then it was... Who who I don't remember. Oh, it was a, a a guy who was in a dress, and he was on the other side. But he looked really he was really masculine. But he really had that on like a real gimmick. flowy dress, <laughs> maybe. Um, but there was uh, the mime, and then me, and then the other person. And the mime stepped up and mimed. <laughs> <laughs> the mime stepped up and mimed, and then I stepped up and sang. And oh my god. My mother was on the outside of the gate on the other side of the stadium. And she knew where to come. Everything in the stadium stopped. <laughs> when I came up, about. when I stepped up, everything in the stadium stopped. No one could sing over top of me. Nothing. Oh, that's got to be and an amazing. And I film. probably, this, is, this was probably the best performance I had ever given in my life. Do you know they let that mind? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm gonna sorry. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you right now, don't be mad at moms because I don't want my sister to call in it's my secret, but I used to be a mime. But no the lie. American Idol <laughs> was not for mimes. It was a singing competition, y'all. The mime got ahead of me and I said, This is the last time, the first and the last time I will ever do a competition show. Really? I and did it one more time, but it was, it was so, I, I mean, I, I, my face, I could feel the heat and I got all the way to the other side of the stadium and my mother was on the outside. She was like, I heard you. I heard you. I know you did good. You did so good. <laughs> and it was my mom and my aunt and a couple of other family members. They're all out there. And I just, the look on my face, she was like, oh my God, you didn't get it. You didn't get a gold ticket. And I was like, no, like, just get me out of here. I don't want to do this no more. Like, <laughs> it this was is the crazy. silent person. <laughs> yeah, it was a mime. But at least, so, so do you think that that pushed you more so like, I have to make this, like, I'm going to do this regardless oh yeah. of what Oh, yeah, say. absolutely. I mean, it, it it was what made me decide, you know, without a shadow of a doubt, that I'm going to be serious about this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be serious about this. And I started, I started gigging with a band here in Cleveland called the White House Band. Mm -hmm. And so I was with them for maybe like a year, year and a half until I um, got pregnant with my daughter. Um, but yeah, it was, it was real. So see, that's what I'm talking about. I'm like, you know, it's the thing that elevates us to the next level that says, hey, you know what? You might not think I'm good enough, but it's somebody out here because it's somebody listening to you in Malaysia right now. Yes. <laughs> yes. So we appreciate our yes. viewers in Malaysia. So 
here it is you are the singer and you're doing all this amazing stuff do you ever get grief because like so reading your bio you mm -hmm. say that you're a soul r&b and gospel artist yes do you ever get like feedback from people like you can't be all of those things like you can't mix all of those things together you know people have tried to to say you should pick one but it's a part of me like we all have different parts of us that that make us and for me to say that you know i'm i'm only going to do gospel music because i believe in god or i'm only do soul music because you know that's who you know rocks with me i i can't just pick one thing and then it's the the irony of it all is in the type of music that i make i talk about god you know and it's soulful and it connects and reaches the people that won't go to your church. I'm so glad you said that. That, uh, you know, go to your church and don't hear you, can't feel you. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not feeling what you're saying because it's, it's you, you extra, you know, that mm -hmm. kind of stuff. Um, it's people in the, in, the, in the bars, in the clubs where the preachers and the pastors don't go. She is speaking my language, y'all. So, so I, I mean, I was in a cigar bar maybe two weeks ago. Lord have mercy on my on my on my throat, <laughs> <laughs> on, my, on my vocal cords. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you know, the song that I wrote called "Way Down," it it's about you know, it's about depression. It's about believing in something you know great greater than yourself believing in god and getting back up and doing it and doing the 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 soul searching and the digging and the not giving up and there was a woman that was there who stopped me on my way out and she was like you have no idea and the way she grabbed my arm was like something serious mm -hmm. and she was like you have no idea how that song just affected me I need to buy your CD. I need to hear it over and over again. I'm going to play this when I get in my car. I need I need this song. That song really touched me. And when I wrote that song, I was talking about my relationship with God. I was talking about my relationship with my family and how I didn't give up on what I believe in. You know, and so I'm so glad you said that because I'm a firm believer that we are the church. The church mm -hmm. that they're talking about is a building, but that you carry the church within so that wherever you go, whoever you are, you express that, whether it's in your art form, whether it's the way you live your life, oh, whatever yeah. you do, you express it. But also often we don't get that. And so when I read it, I was like, oh, she's so R&B and gospel. I know people are like, you can't be singing that secular music and talking Listen, about you praising Jesus. God too. created it all. He created it all. Every last bit of it. Y'all want to talk about, uh, you know, can't play that secular music. Well, I want y'all to turn to Solomon, the song of Solomon. Let's let's go there because he's talking about breasts and stuff. OK, <laughs> it's a love. Story. I don't even go that deep. I mean, I kind of get a little bit deep, but I don't <laughs> go that deep to go describing the, you know, the very intricate and intimate things. I don't even go that deep. That's and that's in the Bible. But see, so you're going to tell me I choose. can't. You want to pick. pick yeah, choose. cherry picking. Don't cherry pick me. So. God loves me and he loves you too. <laughs> Boom. And see, and that's what people need to get like that. It's all love. Right. It and is. how you express your art is what God gave to you to yeah. express to people. And who knows how many souls you've saved or you brought to Jesus just because mm -hmm. of what you're singing and what you're saying in your song. Music has given me an opportunity to reach more people than I ever would in my normal life mm -hmm. to bring them to God. And see, that's an amazing thing. I think that we miss the point. If we are just so focused in on attending the church and making sure we're filling in that pew, mm -hmm. that we're missing that point. So I was like, okay, she is so R&B and gospel singer. Let me get into this album. <laughs> <laughs> so first, let's talk about Future and Retrospect, because this was your first EP. Yes. Okay, so tell us, what was your whole thought process when you were putting together the songs you picked for that album? So Future and Retrospect was talking about relationships mostly mm -hmm. and real stories um, true stories about what was going on so I had a story in there um, called you got it going on and it was um, a song called you got it going on and it was talking about how me and my husband met and all of the stuff that he was saying and trying to woo me and get me <laughs> and then you know I had a song talking about how we broke up and how well not broke up but was about to break up and songs about you know I think that one was trying to be in love and you oh, know like other, that, one. Ooh, that one was that hard. was a deep that one. was deep 
Uh, but I mean, just a lot of different songs about the ups and downs and ins and outs of, you know, being with somebody and and the things that happened in the past and the things that I wanted to happen in the future, who I was in the present. But the the thoughts that I had of myself uh, going forward. And see, I like the emotional responses when I see artists and they tell the story to go along with the album. And I'm like, oh, my goodness, I never would have thought that, you know, yeah. like you were really going through something at the time. You I poured was. out all your heart yeah. and soul into this. And people just think that you just got a good vibe. You got a good oh, beat yeah. dropped. And that's it. See, they see the pictures and stuff on Instagram <laughs> and Facebook. They be like, oh, look at that black love. It's so beautiful. But you didn't listen to the song. <laughs> you must not have listened to the song because the song we was going it told y'all we was going through some things. It's some serious stuff. So it's I, hard out here when you're trying to be in love. I told Donnie, I called. I said I'm listening to the um, song again because <laughs> I feel like different emotions every time I listen to it. I said one time I was praising Jesus, and the next time I was like, that man did me. Oh, he like, did me wrong. Wrong. <laughs> So it was just it when you mix those soul and R and B and gospel, I was able to feel so many things that I was able to express that. So I was like, Oh my goodness, like we got a winner right here. I had as what I told I said I had everybody in the office like, Give me your opinion. What do you think? I need to know because this is what I thought when I listened to the song. Oh, like, I do you it. feel the same way? What were your musical influences during that time? Uh for the first E P Mm, I didn't listen to any music. Really? Nope. I didn't listen to any music. I didn't watch any TV. It was just me really journaling and talking about what I was going through, talking about what I aspired to be, you know, in my relationship and just as a person. So I didn't really listen to anything then. But this album, oh, it's 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 off the <laughs> chain. My, my, my ear is like all over the place. I got things everywhere. Okay, so I'm glad you said that because I was listening. I listened to the song I Am More a mm -hmm. couple of different times. And I was like, is this her proclamation? Like, mm -hmm. are you stating like, this is what you're stating to the world? Or were you talking specifically to your husband? Because now I need to know. Now oh, you need to know. It. It like, like, I want to know. <laughs> I'm so, nosy. I Am More was a proclamation to everybody and some. So, the close people who were in my purview, <laughs> in my life. <laughs> And the people who were on the outside looking in. So I, I believe at that time I was, you know, an admin and I worked for um, I worked for a couple of physicians and, and I was doing their travel and, you know, uh, making their accommodations and doing their scheduling and answering phones and all of that stuff. And then I would come home and I would cook dinner and I would be with my husband Working that double, all of that, you know? <laughs> um, and then I would be sitting there like, this cannot just be my life. Like, this is not just my life. Like I'm not just here to serve other people in every aspect of my my waking up and going to bed like i am more than this i'm so glad you said it because i was in the car like oh, i'm not gonna yes. say for you guys i almost slipped up <laughs> <one second. laughs> y'all won't get that out of me that is not my talent but like i was like as the more i listened to it i was like it is a proclamation like i am more than what you think i am mm -hmm. i'm more than what you think i'm supposed to be i'm even more than what i think i'm mm -hmm. supposed to be so yeah. i'm telling you ladies if you know that you more go ahead on in and tune in i was yes. on youtube like Choo -choo 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 -choo. but you need to go <laughs> check her out on itunes and check out i am more i was like yes. that was one of my favorite songs off of that particular album so i'm like i'm not gonna stalk you anymore now that i have it <laughs> you can stalk me all you want i love stalkers it's awesome <laughs> so you get this ep out and then how long do you wait before you drop another single oh i think it was almost a year I think it was almost a year, something like that. So I think I dropped the EP in 2014, and then I didn't come back until, well, no. Yeah, about a year, a year and a half. Um, and I was ready. Uh, <laughs> Who I Am was the song that I dropped after the EP. I teamed up with uh, FC on the beat. He was he's He is a local producer, and he's got a podcast, too, which is pretty cool. But, um, oh, my goodness. So the song that I wrote was not about what was actually happening at that time. It was about 
some <laughs> past things that was going on. But you sometimes, this is what I believe as an artist, is sometimes you have to write that stuff and release it so that you oh, yeah. can move on. Oh, yeah. To the next so you can thing. move on. I'm a, <laughs> I released that and let it go. I had to let that one go because it was real. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, who I am was, was real. And so now we fast forward mm -hmm. to live now. Yes. How did you come up with this name? So I, I actually came up with the title because um, right right before I was done finalizing the the project, I was kind of in the toss up of do I do more songs? You know, do I add more songs to it? Do I, you know, take some of the songs that I got sitting on the shelf? You know, do I take the single who um, I'm yours and add that to it? Or what do I do? Um, and I'm in this uh, group, this music group called uh, The Music Realm. And I was posing the questions to my, my friends, like, what do y'all think I should do about, you know, the music? Do I add more? Do I leave it at three? Do I put it at five? You know, what do I do? And um, they were like, you should just, you know, do what you believe in your heart is going to be the best thing to do. And I had listened to uh, DJ Jazzy Jeff's um, Chasing Goosebumps. Oh. <laughs> if you really like music, you want to check that out too. But Chasing Goosebumps was really about, um, and he, he would say while he was doing the, they were actually filming the making of that album like over, I think it was a week, like seven days or something like that. And they were filming like 24 hours a day. Him, Glenn, Lu Glenn Lewis, you know, other artists in the room. Glenn Lewis. I like oh, he, Glenn, Glenn Lewis. is still here. He's like still Glenn out Lewis. here. And so when they were filming that, um, he said uh, one of the things that he was saying is die empty. Ooh. So if today was your last day, you know, would you have done everything that you could do? Would you have released everything that you had in you that God gave you to give to the world? Like you need to let it all out and die empty. You could be satisfied with, you know, giving everything that you have to give when you've done that. Mm -hmm. And so around the same time where I was finalizing my album, um, my aunt passed away mm -hmm. and I was in, and we went to her service and at the service, she said, she said, um, not, not her. I'm sorry, y'all. She didn't, she did not get up and say <laughs> nothing. She was not, well, she was there, but she wasn't there like that. Um, but she, um, her, one of the people who were, was at the service said that they had an encounter, um, with my aunt and she had something to say to every one of her nieces and nephews and, and her children and her family. And what she said was that she believed that my aunt was telling her to tell us to do the things that we needed to do to be be great to get the degrees to do whatever wonderful thing that god gave us to do do that mm -hmm. and so i was like you know what you just gotta live now like you gotta live Ooh. now whatever it is that you love whatever it is you want to do whoever you want to be go forth and be great and do it now. Live now because tomorrow is it's, not promised. And see, that's the thing I think people put off a lot of stuff that they want to do. Mm -hmm. Like if you're a chef, go out there and get your restaurant. If you're a baker, bake up some cookies and drop them off at the radio station. Robin and right. I love cookies. If you're a writer, write. Because I know for me, like... Um, it started when I was 12, writing competition. Mm -hmm. I brought the writing competition to the school, but did not win the writing competition. And from that point on, I was like, I don't want to write anymore. No. And you let that one thing that happens to you break you down. Oh, I talk about that so much. <laughs> I do. It's like, you know what? I've, I've had so much adversity in my life. I've had so much adversity in my life that if I would have given up back then, who knows? where I would be. I would be in somebody's uh, uh, insane asylum right oh about God, now. The same way like, for real. <laughs> for real, okay? I would be really messed up. But we can't allow the things that disappoint us or challenge us or, you know, make us feel bad. Because some of the stuff hurts. It's painful. Mm -hmm. You know, some of the experiences that we have, you know, don't feel the best. And so, if we allow every little thing, big thing, painful thing to stop us, we won't be able to do anything. 
And see, that's the thing. I think you constantly, though, and I don't know if you're going to agree with me on this, you need people pouring into you. Oh, because yes. even though I have put that pen down, every time an opportunity came up for me to write something, my mom was always volunteering me. Like, I wrote my grandmother's obituary. Okay. And I was like, okay. <laughs> like, who wants, you know, who wants to write this? But it was my turn to be creative. And it was probably one of the Listen, most creative <laughs> ways. And that's a wonderful thing. <laughs> it was a love letter to my grandmother. That's beautiful. And so, but every opportunity, there was somebody pouring into me, telling mm -hmm. me, like, you still need to do this. Like, this is your purpose. This is your talent. Who poured into you? Um... Oh, I had a lot of people pouring into me. Mm. When? At what point? So when we go to live now, because you're to at live your aunt's funeral and you come up with live okay. now. I'll be honest. Who was pushing you? My my husband pushed me. My manager, Rosa Foster. Oh, my God. My husband pushed me. But Rosa was the one who was like, okay, he said you could do it now. This is what we're going to do. You know, <laughs> all right, girl, come on. She was the one plotting with me, you know, plotting and planning. Um, and then I had um, FC. You know, we started out the project together. Um, and then Brandon Scott in Columbus, he was the other producer. You know, I would travel um, from Cleveland mm -hmm. to Columbus to record with him. And even uh, the music realm. When I tell you that group of people, Dorwan Tanner, um, Max Heisenberg, Oh my goodness! Like, and see, don't don't be mad at her if she missed somebody because I did not give her these questions. K twelve. <laughs> But see, I just want people to get that it's important yeah. that at a time when you're going through something and you're trying to mm -hmm. express yourself, yeah. that the people you surround yourself with are important because they help push you yes. to the next level. And it's amazing how and, and, and I'm going to go back to I'm going to go back to the music realm because it's amazing how social media connects people. Mm. And these folks in this group helped me get to the finished product. They helped me get to the end of my my vision you know and it was so hard to do things on my own i really couldn't i couldn't have accomplished this by myself without chris without everybody in that group it just man social media connects us in on a whole nother level that people don't thing. even realize see people think that you're just liking a picture or you're just no. making a comment here and there i do i don't know about you but i do go back and see who likes stuff who's following me now so that i can say hey how can we connect and absolutely that's the most important thing to me is just making sure that you make connections with people who honestly want to push you forward and move you ahead yes. hot people we're going to take a short break we'll be back momentarily we're going to be playing I'm sorry, go ahead, Donnie. Get your <laughs> we're going to be listening to oh. Donnie Lene on the break. Yes, we're going to uh, check out my uh, one of my songs on my EP, Live Now. It's called Way Down. Oh, and I like this one. <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Within. Never have to second guess this feeling. Take your time and let him in. People just wanna be happy, but they don't. They don't know how to break through. They don't know how to break through. They can't help the way they feel, but I know. Uh oh, I know the truth. Kill the real thing Growing inside of me It's the dream manifesting Incubating blessings No more stressing No more stressing People just wanna be happy People. But they don't They don't Know how to break through They don't know how to break through They can't help the way they feel
hot peeps welcome back once again if you are just joining us i am in the studio with donnie lene and we are talking about her soulful beautiful sensational voice and i'm talking about i am a fan you guys like i'm having a fangirl moment i told her when she sent me the stuff i'm like okay let me listen to it then the more i listen you know that when you get some music and you use it to clean up around your house that's like signature music oh yeah oh yeah (laughs) you know you in good when you can get in the kitchen (laughs) If they can get all the dishes done, you are in there like swimwear. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so we were talking over the break, and I wanted to ask you about your transformation. Mm-hmm. So from future and res- retrospect to live now, what was your transformation like? Like, what did you go through in order to push this out? You know what? I went through a lot of rejection, um, rejection from people who... You know, I respect and, uh, you know, people who I believed had my back. Um, Yeah, I had to I had to bump my head a little bit. I had to go through. I really had to go through the fire to get to the finished product of this. You know, I had to have some sad days. I had to do some some gigging and 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 busting my butt to get out there and make this happen like every dime that i had from you know performing with other bands and Mm -hmm. from doing work for other people i put into my project and see i think that's uh, i'm so glad you said that because so often people are like no just invest in yourself and you have to do this for yourself and some people don't realize that sometimes you have to help someone else in order to help yourself oh yeah oh yeah and absolutely so, and all of that like okay i may have to go work here with somebody else and do their project to make my project better and that's okay absolutely you know like not everybody is just gonna catch that one infamous break that you get and take off and that's going to be it for you. Sometimes you have to get help from somewhere else or you have to be helpful somewhere else Oh yeah, in order to move ahead. So I've been sitting here talking about it. My favorite song is I'm Yours. I love that song. Like yeah. it has been on repeat in the car. Y'all think I'm kidding. <laughs> if you get in my car with me right now, it is on. And so I was telling you when I initially <laughs> listened to it, I was like, oh, this is a love song from me to my boo. Ooh, this is it and I listened to it the third time I said oh my god this is about Jesus this is about the, <laughs> the Lord this is about God so but you know hey what, so what did you expect when you released it what did you expect people to grab from that song oh the song was real deep it is. I mean, even the video, yeah. the visuals on the video. Go on over to YouTube, y'all. Check out "I'm Yours." Yes, check it out. Because I was like, so there were moments in the video where I could picture it, like I'm having I'm having my own private conversation with mm-hmm. God right now. Mm-hmm. It's peaceful. I'm flowing through it. But before I saw the video, I was like, I'm having a conversation sitting across the bedroom with my boo, and we having it out like this. Right, so, right. What was the concept that you wanted people to go with? Like, what was your thought process behind it? You know, I wanted people to internalize for themselves, you know, what what a struggle in your life in relation to God looks like. So the conversation I was having was with God about how my life had turned out, the way that things were happening, the the challenges that I was having and you know, that I was still his child and I was still, you know, his, even though I was going through all of these things. So you can listen to the lyrics and (laughs) know what the the thing was. I'm a heathen. (laughs) (laughs) After the third time, I was like, oh, so it's me and Jesus and we in the room and we're having this conversation and we're relating and I belong to him and he belongs to me and we are loving each other. Yes. That was the third one. Y'all know something is wrong with me. So don't. But the lyrics like. I I said emotions are fleeting, but I chase them rather frequently. Mm -hmm. So it's like, you know, you you can you could be happy one moment and then sad in the next. And chasing an emotion will get you in trouble. Mm -hmm. Nine times out of ten. If you're not grounded (laughs) in something (laughs) and hopefully you grounded in God. But if you're not grounded in something that is going to be deeper than the shallowness of an emotion, you're going to get caught up in some stupid stuff. 
Oh, see, I'm telling y'all, this is my song. Y'all got to go on over and listen to it. Yes. So I'm glad you said that, though, because there's always a segue into it's something segue. else I want to find out. Which song on this album took the most emotion to write? Because I don't know, like, so I'm not a songwriter. Mm-hmm. But I know for me, sometimes when I write stuff, I have to step away from it because I can feel all the emotions coming right. out. And it's like, you know, they get so wrapped up and I'm feeling everything that I have to be like, OK, mm-hmm. you know what? Let me step away. What song on this album did that for you? I mean, it's a toss up between I'm Yours and Way Down on really? this album. Yes. When when I was writing I'm Yours, it was it was it was a couple of things that was happening. So I was I was working with FC on the beat and he was he was saying, you know, Donnie, maybe you want to try and do, you know, more contemporary R&B music. So, you know, that's like the trap soul type of thing. Mm hmm. And I was like, okay, I'll try it. And so I was trying to write some of these songs and it was just a challenge to write that stuff. And I would get so frustrated. And so I finally, you know, came up with I'm yours. And he was like, okay, so that's not trap. And I'm like, I know it's not. It's just it's what came out. And so he was like, you know, well, okay, we'll record this or whatever. But I really want you to try and branch out and do something different. Because if you're trying to garner the attention of, you know, the the demographic of people that you're looking for, you're going to have to do something different than what you're used to. Your soul, your R&B, your gospel, we get it. Like... <laughs> And I'm, I'm looking at him like, whatever. Right. Like, don't don't kill and my vibe. you killing my vibe. Whatever. <laughs> but, like, for real, like, he was really serious about me, you know, trying to branch out. And so we did actually do a song together um, on his project that, that. is turnt. <laughs> when I tell you this song is so turnt, it's called, uh, oh, goodness. Oh, goodness. Is it, is it, uh. Wait, is it running? It. No, it's not running. It's not running. <laughs> yeah, I probably got it in my phone. Listen, somewhere. we did it. A- <laughs> I've been slowly like looking at everything you do because I was like, I wanted to know the evolution of the artist. And I think so many times, like, I don't know about other people, we lose who the artist is. We just see them as one person. Oh, yeah. Like, people just saw Beyonce as one thing. Like, this is the only type of album she can do. And then she came out with Formation and got oh, us yeah. all the way all together. All the way together. Like, and we didn't know what back. to do. We was right. like, people was like, she crossed back over she but we accepted it exactly because of who she is like she can do that and so i mean i pride myself on changing in my daily life like i will have hair i will have no hair i will be you know dolled up i will be dressed down y'all don't know what donnie's gonna look like from one day to the next but when it came down to that music it was so hard so so uh fc and i actually did a song called god can and then we did you like i can yes that one is a little so I was trying my little, I was trying my hand in that trap. I was, I was, I was trying it just a little bit. Yeah, oh, oh yeah, absolutely. So when um when we were in the studio recording, uh, I'm yours. He was he was like, you got to do it like this. And I'm like, I can't do that. I can't do what you do. And I would just sit there, and I mean, literally crying, Ooh. crying in the in the studio, like. <laughs> <laughs> and this is just so hard and I don't understand and, and, and you trying to make me do something that I'm not used to doing and he was like girl cut that crying like we got to get this song done I mean I, I probably wasted a half an hour in studio time on crying so then um the second the second song that I think was like super emotional was Way Down because I was talking about some real stuff mm-hmm. that was going on like depression. My husband and I, I love him to death and we were going through a really rocky time where I was depressed, he was depressed. We looking at each other like I can't stand you. You can't stand me because you so unhappy. Mm. Like, I don't like to see you unhappy. He looking at me like, well, I don't like to see you unhappy. And it was just a cycle of unhappy and sadness and just, ugh. (laughs) (laughs) That's real talk because you never know. You know, you never know what a person is going through. You don't. And even when you do, sometimes you don't know what to do to fix it. You don't know how to how to encourage a person that you have tried to encourage in so many ways and and god really did show up and show out on our behalf when it came down to you know the depression thing like he blessed us with 
resources and people Amen. and things that we could do to take advantage of so that we could be better for e for ourselves and for each other. And so Way Down was the song talking about that, like, you know, negative feelings, moments of insecurity kills the real thing growing inside of you. It's the dream manifesting, incubating blessings, no more stressing. And I mean, like, just... It's real. It's real. Like depression is real. When you think negative, your actions is negative. Everything that you say is negative. But the only way to get outside of that is to go deep down on the inside of you and pull out whatever little bit of positivity there is. That mustard seed, that faith of a mustard seed that they talk about, like that little bit of something that's going to keep you, you know, Keep you together. Together. Keep you to keep you sane. To keep you on the right side. Keep you married. You know, I'm just <laughs> keeping it all the way real because I was like, oh, dude, like for real, it's about to get ugly, you know. But, um, yeah, so those two songs were probably the most emotional songs I've, I've written. Yeah. And see, I, I'm so glad that you said that you get to experience all these emotions because people, like I said before, people don't realize what you go through in life, how you have to walk. You still have to be happy because you're trying to sell albums. You're trying oh, yeah. to get your face out there. You are your brand. Yeah. I got that from Sherita Carthorne, y'all. Yes. <laughs> you know, you are your brand. You are the face. And people always want to see you happy. And see, I always reveal to people, like, you may see me out in public and I may look like the people at Walmart, but it's okay. <laughs> I'm still, you know, I'm still represent my brand. I'm still gonna be that just one hot mom, just looking a hot mess oh, that day. <laughs> I was in being being them one time after I did a show, and I was just trying to run and give me some ribs. <laughs> when I tell you, I wasn't looking like nobody. And they was like, ain't you that girl who was up there at, at the one? I was like, oh, Lord, they done you know seen what? me out mm -hmm. here. <laughs> Don't shy away from it. Embrace it. That I was is like, me. yeah, it's me. <laughs> oh, he like, what? Well, your hair look different. You ain't got your hair this time. I'm like, yeah, no. Nah. No, I don't. I called you up on the phone and I said that I was <laughs> not kidding. I had watched the video to I'm Yours. And then I was talking to her and I was like, can you tell me about the hair thing? Like, what's going on? <laughs> what had happened? What, what's happening with that? And she was like, you know. well, it's just simple and it's easier to take care of. I was like, oh, okay, I'm just going to go with that story and flow with it. It really is. So you put all of your emotions into your writing. And mm -hmm. so I always tell people like it. In my writing, like I can write about whatever, but I try not to expose other people mm -hmm. because you are writing so deeply about your marriage and your mm -hmm. family. Is there any pushback from that? Like people don't like your family's like, don't tell our business or your husband's <laughs> like, don't release that about this. Do you ever feel like you're putting them on blast or, you know, it's your story, too, but it's theirs. You too. know what? I We are one. So <laughs> him being me and I being him like. You, this is what you got. This is what you get. If you get with an artist, be prepared to be a part of that artist's artistry at some point. You get with a writer, they're going to write about you. You get with a songwriter, they're going to write about you. They're going to sing about you, you know, in, in some way, shape, form, or fashion. And Your if that's not the life that you want to deal with, you might want to pick somebody that likes to read. <laughs> Because artists will expose you. And and it's not a... And, and, and for me, I, I write in a loving way. I write to encourage people. Mm -hmm. I write to show people that, you know, you can overcome things. So I don't just tell about the negative without offering a solution. I don't tell about the drama without also telling about the triumph, you know, and the success. So, yeah, we done had some hard times, but... At the same time, he said, you know, you don't have to walk anymore. He bought the first diamonds that a sister ever wore. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can't do her. I got to tell y'all the real story. You know, he bought me a house on the lake because that was the real story. Mm -hmm. You know, so eh, he says to me, you wouldn't have nothing to write about if it wasn't for me. <laughs> you right. Don't you feel special? Hey, yes. Turk, we're going to give Turk a shout out. <laughs> hey, so now hey, we babe. have we two EPs in. You blowing up. You booking gigs. We're getting out there. Rosa is pumping you up. What's next? Um, so I'm traveling. I'm traveling. Oh, and I girl, my, my, my <laughs> goal, my big goal is to do a performance in London. Um, Donnie Lene in London. I done made a little visual of it. I put it on my Instagram. 
if y'all follow me on Instagram, it's Donnie, Donnie underscore Lene on IG. I have a, a, a picture that I put up. It says Donnie Lene, London. And I go back and I look at that. Girl, because that's that my real. goal. <laughs> I, thought you, I thought you had been. <laughs> no, I haven't been there yet, but I'm going. And see, I'm I think going. that's so important that we visualize what we want to do next because we could say like, okay, I'm a singer. I put out two EPs and you know what? I'm living the life. And But that's not it. That's not the end of the story oh. because there's so much more to tell. Oh, no, there is so much to tell. And I, I tell a lot more in the in my performances, so I encourage people to come out to my shows. Um, <laughs> I tell a lot more in the songs and in the lyrics, so y'all go ahead on and uh, go to DonnieLene.com and purchase the uh, CD or go on Spotify and stream it. Um, so, yeah, I tell a lot about all of these things with my music and in my performances and my goal is to get out and reach as many people as I can with my message um, of hope, of love, of, you know, being able to be resilient, get back up and, and, and don't give up. So, yeah. Don't let that uh, third grade performance or that American Idol performance no. stop you no, don't from let living it. your dream. Don't let no mime stop you. <laughs> You got this. I'm going to get a lot of slack about that mime. Thing. <laughs> and I'm scared of mimes, too. So that was rough. <laughs> I am. I cannot deal with you. I'm scared of mimes and clowns and kiwi. See, I was a good mime, but I'm so not joking with you. I probably will go on Facebook later on and put that picture up so that people can see. Like, she was lying about that. No, I'm so serious. Yeah. It was in high school. Girl. So... So here it is. We're moving forward and we have plans for the future. But I want you to think about this. Like, mm -hmm. look at this mirror in your hand. Mm -hmm. Like, and we're talking to young Donnie here. Mm -hmm. What does that young person need to know about the evolution of this Donnie here? What would you go back and tell her? Mm. What does she need to know in retrospect? Ooh, we. Yes. Future in <laughs> retrospect. What, I, what would I tell young Donnie? I would tell young Donnie not to internalize what they say mm. so people are going to talk I've never really you know had a problem with what people say per se but I would internalize that so deeply either to a prove them wrong b you know Prove them wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you're not my competition, but I'm going to prove you I'm wrong. I'm going to prove you way. wrong. <laughs> and I still kind of have that, you know, kind of have that attitude. It's not about proving people wrong. It's about proving yourself right. Oh, and I like telling that because I, I always tell people like to like, kind of wrap up the show. I'm like, what will we tell these young people out here? Because there's a young person out here who has the same exact dream that you have. And they're trying to figure it out mm -hmm. and they're bumping their head and they're going through transformation because our young people have a lot more transformation to go through oh, yeah. than we did. There's so much more with social media and things just going on in the world that I feel like it's up to us to plant the seed back. So that once we mm -hmm. kind of figure it out and let me be honest, I don't think we ever figure it out. No. Like, we like I said, never. I'm still trying to figure out <laughs> How we not to let that bother me. Yeah. But it's the point is it's going back and telling the story so that maybe you don't have to bump your head five Ooh, out of the yeah. ten times. You know what I'm saying? You know what? I, I would have told myself to just start. Oh, just start. Like people try to wait for the perfect storm right mm -hmm. gotta wait for my money to be right i gotta wait for my 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 you know my work situation to be optimal i gotta wait until i find bay i gotta wait until i you know no and we spent so much time waiting so much time waiting and wasting that time that we could have just been out here doing what we love and living out our passion listen i don't wear tennis shoes or very much uh <laughs> you know uh athletic gear but nike made some sense when they say just do it for <laughs> real just do it y'all like you kill you kill so much creativity by waiting for perfection. Let the ugliness of it all out. I'm still, you know, I don't feel like Future in Retrospect was the best work that I've ever done, but it was the best that I had in me at that time. And so I released that and I let it out. And people are still blessed by those songs. And 
this is not going to be the best thing that I ever do. I'm going to do better things than this. But if you don't let that stuff out and just do it and live now, you going to be somewhere in somebody's grave, you know, and folks is going to be saying, oh, well, and you're going to die with all your stuff. with all your stuff. <laughs> you're going to die full when you should be dying empty, die empty, live now, just do it. Get it off your chest. Say it with your chest. <laughs> she just gave y'all 15 hashtags. Ooh, right hashtag. Get but your you life. Know what? It's so important for people to know that you don't have to wait to do it. You look, even mm. if you doing it and you the only person. Like I told you, I was like, for a long time I wrote and I was the only person reading what I wrote. Cracking my own self yeah. up. But I did it because it was something I was passionate about and mm -hmm. I was loving it. And then the moment that I was like, I loved it enough that I felt like I could release it. Oh, yeah. Oh, my life got so much sweeter. Oh, it got yeah. so much sweeter. Listen, I was scared to have my own band for so long. I finally did that, right? I was like, I got my own band. I put it together. Finally did that. <laughs> What did I wait? What's going on? No, why did I wait so long to do that? And once you do it, you can't remember when you didn't have it done. Right. So that. Oh, so I'm gonna need you to drop your info for the people one more time because okay. I, we need to blow up her page, y'all. We need to. Yeah. I'm gonna need to, when I come in your house tomorrow, wherever I end up, I'm gonna need y'all to have I am yours playing. Yes. <laughs> so go ahead and drop your info for us. Okay. You can go to www.donnylene.com. You can access my Instagram, my Facebook, my Twitter on my page on on my website. Uh, you can also buy T-shirts and and download the EP Live Now there. And if you want to stream it, go to Spotify. I'm trying to get my numbers up <laughs> so they can pick me and be like. We're going to send you to London. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> so we're trying to push forward and move you ahead for the future. And I am so excited for you because I can just see now like the next EP. Wait, am I saying right? It's the next EP, right? You know what? Um, I'm going to my I'm going to do a stretch goal and actually do an album. See, OK. A now whole album. Put it out there into existence. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna do an album this time. And so the next album, I'm gonna need to see that you know hear this before. I got you. Put, you. Okay, I that got just you. so that we know we that cool now. <laughs> but we putting that out there in existence that whatever you want to do is possible for you to do. Yes. Have faith in yourself. Say your prayers and get up and just do it. Just do it. If it if if it can work out for me, it can work out for you. If I can do it, you can do it too. So I am so glad. Thank you for coming on today. I truly Thank you appreciate for having you. Me. I appreciate the music. I was like, yes, I'm here for all of it. Hey, hot people. I just want to leave you with this note. Like Donnie said, I mean, she gave us so many hashtags and stuff like that, that whatever it is you want to do in life is possible. Get up and do it it's just a matter of you pushing yourself to the next level i told you before i made up my mind in 2015 that i was going to live so outside of my comfort zone i was going to be so uncomfortable that i wasn't going to be able to bear it but it worked out for me and it can work out for you too i'm gonna need y'all to go on all of my social media just one hot mom because you're going to be able to get donnie's information there as well go on over and visit the blog at just one hot because i need to get my numbers up as well and you'll be able to view this again on elevationsradio.com and don't forget to join us monday at Kelvantes for the connect we'll all be there helping you get connected and helping you to elevate your lives to the next level now i put in a special request Quest. And I asked Robin, like, I'm going to need you to find this song so that you guys can enjoy it just as much as I've enjoyed it today. Robin, can we get I'm Yours playing? Yes, All right, hot people. It's been fun. You've been tuned in. And guess what? You've been elevated. Talk to you soon. Mm -hmm.